thank you, Tahirlik, and thank you all for your contributions. A lot has been said at this stage. Um, some of you might know I was involved in 2012, well, for several years before that, in developing a whole community, whole school approach um, to bullying um, with Trinity Anti-Bullying Centre with Stephen Minton and, uh, and Le Leanne Barrett as part of a community development project I did. So what I would... And, and that obviously involved, and it very much speaks to the whole community involvement. And I can't see any other way that um, that we can tackle bullying in a meaningful way, except through a whole um, whole community approach to it. So I'd make probably some um, observations. And within that, you had the guard, you had the GA, you had the soccer clubs, you had the clinicians, the teachers, the students, and everybody involved. Um, uh, in in the approach to it, and it did work, and uh, I suppose it's one of the evidence-based models that were produced. But I suppose we're lucky in a sense that we're in 2020, in that we have a huge amount of information internationally and nationally. So we have the evidence-based models there. So I think it's time to look at how we bring all this forward. Uh, and first to commend the schools who um, who implement really good anti-bullying policies because there are really good practices out there. I know them even in my own area. And um, so what we need to do is to encourage the schools that um, aren't participating. Because the most thing that used to worry me is the schools that would say, or the teacher would say, well, bullying doesn't happen in my school. You know, it doesn't happen here. And straight away, I mean, that should alert us all to, I would not send my child to a school where the, the, the board of management or the teachers would say bullying doesn't happen here because we know where there are human beings, as was said, there's the potential to be bullied and there's the potential for bullying behaviour. So it's how we deal with it. And I think we have really good models of good practice there um, to deal with it. Now, we, I trust we haven't talked so about the whole cost of bullying because I think we're being foolish in terms of not investing in the way that we need to to tackle bullying in a meaningful way. If we're to look at, say, Australia, even for instance, they estimated, and, and it might be one of my questions, have we estimated it here, uh, of how much it costs us as an island or as a country, in um, um, how much bullying or school bullying um, um, costs us, because it's 2.3 billion uh, in Australia. That's what it's estimated to be. So both from an economic and a social point of view, it makes sense for us to get a grip of this. And that's why I'm glad to see that our committee are, 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 are putting aside some sessions to, to deal with this. But it does concern me. So I suppose my a couple of questions are around the, the nature of when, when there's 400 um, cases arriving on, on, on your desk um, and Nile across your desk after all of these years, we have to ask questions of why they are. And we would have to assume that the, the gravity of those cases are quite, you know, that all of the other procedures have been gone through uh, in, in trying to deal with things. So that's a failure of the system. So that's 400 failures that we know of. But we also know that that majority probably of, of children um, suffer in silence. And the damage is being done while uh, the young person or the child uh, is inside it. So, what measurements are in place for for as, as a government? What measurements are in place to see if the the procedures, the anti-bullying procedures that are divvied out to schools, that they're actually working? What and I hate to use the word sanctions, but what sanctions are in place if? The, an anti-bullying policy isn't implemented uh, within a school. And I, I use sanctions in the wider sense of the word. And what resources are in place? So what extra resources have we put in, specifically ring fenced for bullying, say, in the last 10 years in schools? Um, I really do. Uh, so it, just in terms of teacher training as well, because part of the project we did, we got Drum, Drum Condra accepted the, the, the training to be done and approved the training to be done. So is there a recognised training programme 
for teachers that's sufficient to meet their needs in order for them to be able to to tackle bullying in the way that they need to. And I really, really like the idea of having the, the, the counsellor in place for um, national schools there, both in terms of supporting the teachers, but in supporting the children as well, but also in terms of the wider acceptance of seeking help um, when one needs it and kind of I, I just really think that would have so much broader benefits even beyond and above and beyond the children that would see that um, 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 counsellor. So there's a bit in there and I'm not sure who uh, who would answer some of those questions. Maybe starting with yourself, Niall, in terms of the measurements and where we are. Deputy Walsh, you've nearly taken up your six minutes with the question, but any, I, I will give oh. I give the witnesses I give the witnesses one and a half minutes because I, I, I'm aware there's a full attendance at the meeting today and I want to make sure we get everybody in, but I will allow people back in uh, to answer Thank your you. question. Okay, Dr. Thank Muldoon. you, Chair. Yeah, I mean again this is this is probably the case about data collection. At the moment there's no uh, there's no result if, if a, a school fails in regards to data policy. The, the department only look to see if they have a policy. And then what I would like to see is that they how many how many times has it been used in the year, what it's been used for, what's been the success rate of that. And again, that would allow us to find out who's been successful and who has communicated well around those things. So that's the way, from my point of view, I think it's been set up at the moment to be a lot of the time it's about finding a perpetrator and dealing with the perpetrator in the disciplinary area. And you've heard from all the therapists, that's not the way forward. And even when we consulted with children, children are very clear that it has to be a relationship between the two people, the bullies and the, the victim, and that has to be dealt with. And often schools just don't do that. Um, and that's a, that's a culture thing we need to deal with. So. Um, I'll leave it at that, just this quick. Okay, is there one other person who wants to come in there to um, De Deputy Kamo? Is there anything else you want to direct your question to and I give them 30 seconds to reply? Well, uh, no, I'm not. Maybe maybe in, in, in the context of answering other questions, they might just refer to, to some of the, the issues that I have raised in terms of Perfect. resources within schools and what's needed there and just how we're going to measure this to, to bring in more schools into where where um, where schools have been have, have okay. models of good practice okay okay